Hi, everyone. I'm so sad that I'm not there in Philly with you, but thank you so much to Faye and the, everyone organizing the conference for having me here today to talk to you about Ehlers Danlos and the orofacial region. So, my name is Christina Semenik. I'm a doctor with speech language pathology, and I specialize in swallowing disorders that are specifically secondary to sleep and facial pain. Um, as you can imagine, that brings a lot of clients with EDS into my office. Financial disclosures, I do receive compensation for some lectures, I own a private practice, um, non-financial, and a number of multiple professional organizations. And most important, I am positive that I have hypermobile EDS, um, but haven't been able to get that formal diagnosis. Um, so EDS really is a topic close to my heart, both personally and professionally. The plan for today is to discover what areas of communication and swallowing differences are really common in EDS and how SLPs might be able to support you. I really hope to arm you with a few tools such as screeners and papers that may help you advocate for services and as you come across those people who maybe have a little less of an understanding of EDS. Where possible, I have tried to find specific papers with EDS, so there are some general ones in there too. Um, I, with the papers, you should be able to just use the name and plus PDF and it will actually give you a copy of the screener itself. Um, so as you all know, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome or EDS is a group of connective tissue disorders that can uh, affect various systems in the body. It's systemic, it's multifactorial, and it's highly variable. Um, most of my clients have concerns regarding voice, speech, orthodontic differences, and of course those larger systemic concerns. In the U.S., speech pathologists provide a, a wide range of, service, of services, too many to list here, but you can really appreciate how vast the profession is. Um, in individuals with EDS, most commonly pre they present as with voice, speech, swallowing, and myofunctional disorders, or we'll talk about that a little later. Just think of it as oral resting postures. Um, so concerns regarding hypermobility and coordination and structural differences within the oral facial region um, sometimes present as difficulty with precise or crisp speech sounds um, or as resonance. So maybe if your palate is high, it's intruding on the nasal airspace. And so you just sound a little stuffed up. Um, so often there are some bigger pieces there. Um, there was a study in 2022 that really linked hypermobility to neurodivergence. So we do see a lot of patients might have difficulty with executive functions. So that's things like word finding or organizing your daily tasks or attention. Uh, luckily, there's SLPs here to help. Um, what I would say in general for this section is usually you don't need a formal screener in order to get to the referral. Um, just providing a list of your symptoms is usually enough. Um, so people with speech differences coming to my office usually complain of something like a mild lisp or feeling like they're tripping over their words. They might feel like it's really hard to give a whole presentation. Um, with nasality, ENTs are usually able to jump right in there, although you may want an orthodontist as well. Executive functioning um, can be a little tricky, but it seems to be getting better and better as there's an increased awareness of attention differences. If you do need something, the brief is a nice quick screen that might be valuable, valuable to you. There are multiple common differences or pathologies in EDS um, because of you know that increased fatigability. You might notice that your voice fatigues too, and so your voice might sound very different at the end of the day than it did at the beginning. Um, you might notice that you actually sound breathier. Um, dysphonia is just a fancy way of saying that the quality of your voice might be different. So some people are going to present with a little bit of hoarseness. Other people might complain of some instability where their voice actually feels like it gives out completely. Um, we do also see that due to those fragile natures of the connective tissues, um, people with EDS using their voice normally are going to be still at a higher risk of developing vocal fold nodules or polyps. That's something we usually would only see in a vocal performer. Um, some individuals may notice a limited range. So your singers, you might notice that you're not hitting your high notes the same as you used to be. Um, for general speech, you might just notice you sound a little more monotone than normal. You may also have a feeling of globus, which is really just a sensation of tightness or a lump in the throat. Um, People with EDS, obviously more susceptible to like inflammation and infections, which can impact your voice. There's other much less common issues as well. Um, it's, so if you have issues with breathing, um, especially with exertion or exercise, it's get, worth getting a referral to a, a voice clinic. Um, 
I'm going to play as a clip of my own voice because I noticed this is one of the ways that my symptoms definitely show up. Um, so we can listen to the roughness, the breathiness, just the overall voice quality, um, weakness or lack of power um, or strain and vocal effort in voice. So give me a quick sec. When the sunlight strikes raindrops in the air, they act as a prism and form a rainbow. The rainbow is a division of white light into many beautiful colors. These take the shape of a long round arch with its path high above and its two ends apparently beyond the horizon. Okay, so not too bad. You can hear a little bit of roughness. You can hear my breathing is actually a little bit more challenging and there's a little bit of strain. Nothing that actually sounds like I can't function. Um, but we can then what I did is I immediately after did a massage in the voices uh, in the muscles of the larynx um, and did some vocal function exercises as well and then it sounded a little like this when the sunlight strikes raindrops in the air they act as a prism and form a rainbow the rainbow is a division of white light into many beautiful colors these take the shape of a long round arch with its path high above and its two ends apparently beyond the horizon so that sounds much better, right? There definitely is that, that same strain in the voice. You can hear that it's light and bright. Um, and it really sounds like my voice is much more musical than it did before the massage and vocal function exercises. So that's something that if you notice you just sound a little different, it's worth getting the referral and at least meeting with a voice therapist at least one time. Um, if you suspect that you have voice voice concerns, of course you can write your own voice, but the VHI or Voice Handicap Index is a really useful tool that actually looks at how much the voice disorder is impacting your life. Because even a mild disorder can have big impacts. Um, it's 30 questions that you rate zero never to four always. Um, and it looks at things like People have difficulty understanding me in a noisy room, or I feel like I run out of air when I talk, or I feel like I have to strain. Um, I'm less outgoing because of my voice problem. Um, it's amazing how closely connected um, personal identity and voice can be. Um, so when you finish that questionnaire, if you have 30 or under, you're considered mild, 30 to 60, moderate, um, and above 60, a severe impact on your quality of life. So if you think that's a thing, definitely get that data in and talk to your primary care provider or vo local voice clinic. We do know that reflux really commonly co-occurs with voice disorders um, and with swallowing disorders. So if you have a voice concern, you should also be checking out your reflux. The RSI, another quick screener or reflux symptom index rather, um, is really quick um, and scores of 13 may indicate severe reflux. From the literature, we know that there is an increased prevalence of voice, upper airway, and swallowing symptoms in hypermobile clients when compared to the general population. Um, but what's interesting is this might actually show up as early as childhood. So Rimmer and colleagues actually found that this might be a sign right from when kids are little. I'm sure many of you are parents in this room. So it's worth just maybe taking a second look at the voice of your child. Uh, the top paper here is by Williams et al. They use that RSI and VHI that we just discussed. They also use the E10, which we'll look at later. They found some really interesting stuff. And for the most part, what they saw is that um, people with EDS were more likely to have a mild to moderate impact uh, of their voice. So, or on their quality of living because of their voice. So with about 30% 30, uh, 30 of people reporting moderate and 15% with severe impact on their quality of life. In that same study, again, looking at that reflux, they noticed that there is a significant correlation. So 86% of these respondents were at high risk of reflux, um, of severe reflux. The For swallowing problems, almost 80% of people with EDS may have a swallowing disorder. Um, we also see a very high likelihood of TMJ disorders in hypermobile and classic EDS and in hypermobile spectrum disorder. But let's back up a little. So because that paper, I did jump right into chewing and swallowing. But what am I talking about when I'm talking about feeding? So I'm referring to the actual chewing or oral preparation of the food, the movement of that food or liquid, then from the mouth to the throat, the throat to the esophagus, and the esophagus to the stomach. It sounds simple, but it's actually a really complex task that requires precise timing and coordination of about 30 muscles, plus all those muscles of respiration as well, or breathing as well. 
So in EDS and also generally, we can actually see a breakdown at any one of these stages. And so getting really good in-depth quality assessment is important to discover how this may be impacting you. Now, chewing is a really common issue in my practice. Often people just think of the jaw as opening and closing, but when we think of it in feeding, we're using those front teeth to bite and tear food. We want to use those back teeth for a mature rotary and diagonal chewing pattern that really gives good effective grinding. Um, and what we see is that working on chewing and that chewing musculature not only makes eating easier, but it also seems to help stabilize the TM joints because you actually build up muscle when you're, when you're chewing functionally. So if you don't notice you have difficulty with chewing, maybe it shows up for you in a slightly different way. Maybe you notice it takes you forever to eat because you can only take these cup, little teeny tiny bites or sips and it, maybe you have to swallow more than once to get it down. Maybe you notice you can't eat some of the textures you used to. Maybe you actually feel like you don't have enough saliva or too much saliva. Maybe you eat so much faster than everyone else because you're basically not even chewing your food. Again, so many reasons why things can go wrong. Um, so we will... As speech pathologists, we'll go in, we'll assess that. We'll also then look at your risk of aspirating or that same stuff moving into your lungs. Hopefully not a concern for anyone in this room, but statistically, maybe for some of you. So we definitely want to get in and screen, make sure that everything's okay. With GI, sometimes when there's motility disorders, speech pathologists get called in to help maybe modify the diet slightly. Um, more commonly in my practice, it's when people are swallowing air. So if we're swallowing a lot of air, we're more likely to then burp that up and we're like <laughs> have upset because we're burping so often. Um, but if we don't burp that air up and it goes down to lower into throughout the digestive tract, it can actually cause some GI upset as well. Globus sensation, as we talked about with voice, can also be present. It might feel like after you swallow that something's still stuck in there um, or maybe just some significant tension. Um, you can imagine that if you're having difficulty chewing and swallowing your food, maybe the food slips back before you're ready. You might be kind of picky. You might not want to eat those things anymore. So as a therapist, I'm looking at are there entire classes of food that people are just avoiding? Because that might give me a clue as to what's actually going wrong. So picky eating isn't just in little ones either. Um, as you can probably tell already, oral facial pain is my passion. Um, and if I can get one thing across to you today is that if you have pain, I want your swallow to be screened. Heads up. Um, oral Gilhenny has a lovely body of work looking generally at oral facial pain, so just mixed population. 95% of people with orofacial pain had difficulty chewing, about half of them had swallowing issues, and 25% of them had severe swallowing. So I was just looking general because I can appreciate that maybe some of you in this room don't have a formal diagnosis of EDS, even though you're positive you have it. And so her work might be helpful for you. But remember from that earlier study that we suspect that almost 80% of people with EDS may have a swallowing challenge. Um, so let's get you referred and let's get you screened. Um, if you aren't sure if this is a problem for you, here's a lovely, nice screener, the EAT 10. 10 simple questions rating, um, again, from no problem to severe problem, a score of three or greater might indicate you have problems swallowing effect efficiently and safely. Um, if you don't really have mangy concerns regarding your swallow, but you notice that pills are a little more challenging, there is also a screener called the Pill 5 made by the same scientists. These screeners, though, are really only looking at the swallow itself. And remember, my passion is chewing. Um, so I really, really love the Shimmel Two Color Gum Chewing Test. So you just take two different pieces, of, two different colors of gum, tear them in half and mix them up. Um, you should be able to pop that in, chew it 50 times. So 50 actual chews of the teeth and then spit it out. And it should look nice and even. You'd never know that it was two different colors. That's when I want to see if you don't have that, then a referral for oral processing disorder is appropriate. Um, in my people, beca because if you have pain, usually it's on one side more than the other. So I also wanna test if you were to take those same gum, say chew it 20 times on the left, spit it out, 20 times on the right, spit it out. What does it look like? If they look the same, that's a good thing. But if they look significantly different, we also maybe wanna evaluate chewing symmetry as well. Um, and this is consistent with some of the general research on TMD. So they do see that people often are only chewing on one side. Other quick screens that you can check um, are impressions of the teeth on the tongue. So that top picture shows lingual scalloping or those impressions on the tongue. Um, and the bottom one is actually your cheek wall. 
So if there are impressions of the teeth on the cheek wall, you're more likely to have maybe TMD, maybe you're clenching and grinding. And then we know that those are going to be related to things like headaches and neck pain and sleep disorders. Um, there is an entire talk with Leslie on on jaw pain. So I'm not going to go too in depth here, but I do want to call out that referred pain might originate, uh, that we might have referred pain. So it's originating in a different location than you actually feel it. So you might have difficulty in the chewing muscles, but it actually shows up a headache or a tooth pain or as a ringing in your ears. And here are a few common patterns of that referred pain in the small muscles of chewing, in the large muscles of chewing, and then I pull, pulled in a couple examples of the muscles of head and neck posture as well. So usually I'm working hand in hand with my physical therapy colleagues. They're treating from the, the musculoskeletal side and I'm treating from the functional swallowing and chewing side. You may have heard of something called myofunctional therapy, and there is evidence to show that myofunctional therapy can actually decrease the symptoms of orofacial pain of TMD. Um, now, this is looking general population, not EDS specific, but what is myofunctional therapy? I bet you've never even heard of it before. So um, it varies widely, um, but and there are many, many professions involved, dental, some of your medical colleagues, and a lot, and your rehab therapists as well. I'll, everyone I know seems to be a speech pass, but I'm by. Um, so overall, the goal is to establish great postures. Um, so oral posture, your lips should be gently closed. You should be breathing nice and easy through your nose. The tongue should be up and suctioned against the roof of your mouth and away from your front teeth. Um, due to the importance of nasal breathing and tongue posture, um, myofunctional therapy is often commonly used as an adjunct or additional therapy for people who have sleep apnea. And we know that there's a higher incidence of sleep disordered breathing in EDS. Um, again, therapy differs widely. Um, maybe you'll actually be working with a dental hygienist in your dentist's office. Um, Commonly, where I'm located, it's mostly SLPs. We're also then going to treat swallowing and chewing and speech because that's under our scope of practice. I have a great PT colleague. She's also working on respiration and, um, and body posture as well. Um, great. Everybody works together. Okay. If this is the first time you've ever considered tongue posture, let's just give you a quick, quick little intro. So the tip of the tongue should be up in your mouth, just behind, but not touching your teeth. It's often right where we make our N sound. Na, 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 na. The whole tongue should then be suctioned to the roof of your mouth or the hard palate. Now, this actually might be really hard for you. Um, the roof of your mouth might be narrow or high. Maybe you have significant congestion. So I'm often working very hand in hand with my local orthodontist or allergist to make sure it's actually possible for my clients to be able to get this ideal tongue posture. Do you know that if your tongue is resting forward, constantly is actually going to place pressure on your teeth and then your teeth might shift. All right. Um, my favorite screen for myofunctional disorders is actually the Ferrest 6. It was designed for dental and medical professionals to screen sleep if um, structure might be actually contributing to those problems. So if you have even one of these symptoms, you are encouraged to connect with a sleep specialist, um, but I'd love for you to connect with a myofunctional therapist too. Um, the oral behaviors checklist is a really useful tool to help identify if you might have some habits or, or differences that um, might actually be contributing specifically to your oral facial pain. Um, I'd really say rather than a screener, this is probably just a good checklist and a great conversation starter. Um, most likely you're going to talk to your dentist about this. Maybe your hygienist, occupational or speech therapist is probably the most likely. Um, if you do have concerns, I really encourage you to use those screeners that I mentioned and the literature I shared to help you start a conversation with your care team. Um, as I'm sure you're all too familiar, not every provider is knowledgeable about EDS, so be sure you have that with you um, and interview your team. Hopefully they'll be excited to learn more and willing to listen to you about your personal experience because we all know that we're, we're all different. Um, this is just a quick summary slide with the screeners and maybe who you might want to contact. And I had to cut a lot of things out of this presentation. So please, please feel free to reach out to me with questions. Um, lastly, SLPs do not work alone. So if you feel this talk is relevant to you, I really encourage you to watch the presentations by my dental and physical therapy colleagues. Um, but I am sure that the entire conference is just going to be amazing. Thank you so much and have a wonderful rest of your conference.